Welcome to another revision video. This video is all about Newton's laws of motion, balanced and unbalanced forces, and we're going to link all of that into the ideas of terminal velocity. Newton had three laws of motion. Newton's first law is all about balanced forces. For example, if something is stationary and the forces are balanced on it, then because there's no resultant force, there isn't anything to cause any change. So this person who looks rather uncomfortably sat on the chair will just stay sat on the chair. She has a force of weight pulling her down. This downward force is caused by her mass in kilograms being timesed by the gravitational field strength, G, which is in newtons per kilogram or metres per second squared. On Earth, G is worth 10, 10 newtons per kilogram or 10 metres per second squared. Now in this balanced situation, the girl's weight is balanced by the push up from the chair. So that's sometimes called the normal force. In a balanced situation, there is no resultant force to cause a change. So a stationary object stays stationary. But Newton's first law also thinks about when balanced forces are acting on a moving object. An object that's already moving when the force is balanced still has no resultant force to make a change. And therefore, nothing about its movement can change, not its speed or its direction. So balanced forces have no resultant force and therefore cannot result in any type of change. Newton's second law is so important, I made a whole video about it. But let's briefly think about it now. F is really important in this equation. F is the resultant force. So the second law is all about unbalanced forces. The equation explains that resultant forces on masses cause accelerations. This might be the mass starts moving from rest, speeds up from already moving, slows down from moving maybe to a stop. A deceleration is a negative acceleration. Or it might be the speed doesn't actually change at all, but the direction changes. For example, going round a bend at a constant speed. This is because acceleration is a vector. It's the rate of change of velocity. And velocity is also a vector because it's the speed in a particular direction. Acceleration is the change of velocity in a change of time. The final velocity take away the initial velocity divided by the time. So if a mass is staying at the same speed, but it's changing direction as it goes around the circle, the velocity is changing in time and that mass is accelerating. So Newton's second law is all about unbalanced situations where there is a resultant force left over that can make a change. For explaining terminal velocity, we're going to focus on only one direction, that's down. So resultant forces will be causing changes in speed of the mass. For the rest of this video, when I'm thinking about F equals MA, the resultant forces will be causing the masses to speed up, to accelerate downwards, when there's more force pulling down than pushing opposing motion back up. And also, when the forces are causing the falling object to slow down, to decelerate, when the force opposing the motion is greater than the force causing the motion. Newton's third law states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction when forces are balanced. A falling mass falling through air has weight down and air resistance up. The weight is the action and the air resistance the reaction force. If they are the same size or magnitude, there would be no resultant force 
because they act in opposite directions. Now we're ready to think about terminal velocity. As a mass falls from a stationary position, it speeds up. This acceleration is the result of the mass having a resultant force downwards, its weight. That weight comes because the mass is being pulled by 10 newtons on every kilogram, because it's pulled by gravity, and so it has weight. But very little air resistance pushing up on it to resist the motion. The resultant force therefore acts down the same direction the mass is falling, and so it accelerates downwards because the forces are unbalanced. As the mass falls faster through the air, the air particles collide with it more frequently and harder, so the air resistance increases as it speeds up. The weight is fixed, it's the same mass with the same gravitational field strength, so the resultant force is getting less than it was before. This means that even though the speed is still increasing, it's not changing at such a rapid rate, but the forces are still unbalanced. If you look at this velocity time graph, just the start of it, you can see a really steep gradient at the start as the falling mass rapidly accelerates. And as it falls, the air resistance is increasing, causing the resultant force to decrease, and so that gradient gets shallower. Eventually, the mass will reach a speed when the air pushes back on it with a force of equal magnitude. The forces will therefore be balanced. There'll be no resultant force to make a change, and so the mass will stay at that speed, in that direction, at terminal velocity until something happens to unbalance the forces again. It might be that the mass hits the ground. That would change the forces. In the case of a parachutist, they prevent the ground hitting scenario by opening their parachute. By increasing the surface area of this fixed weight, lots more air gets to push upwards, and so the resultant force is now from the air resistance. The parachutist does not go up. They do sometimes look like they go up when they're filmed because the camera person is falling faster than them. So the camera angle is deceptive. But the parachute is falling at this constant terminal velocity. And then by opening their parachute, they unbalance the forces again. The opening of the chute is just like slamming on the brakes of a car. If a car was moving forward when you slam the brakes on, that car wouldn't shoot backwards. But it does rapidly decelerate. And that's what happens when the parachute opens. It rapidly decelerates the parachutist. Then, because they're slowing down, air resistance is getting less. And that means the resultant force upwards is decreasing. So the deceleration rate also decreases. The parachutist is still slowing down, just not by as much every second. In fact, they reach the ground with still quite a speed as they land. So going back to our velocity time graph, terminal velocity is where the velocity doesn't change in time. So the horizontal part of the graph. Once the parachute opens, deceleration is seen in the same downward direction. So everything is on the positive axis of the graph. The rate of deceleration decreases, as you can see by the gradient getting shallower. And you can also see here a second terminal velocity that's met. A terminal velocity at a much slower velocity, a much slower speed, once the forces have rebalanced, weight being balanced by air resistance after the deceleration. And so that's balanced and unbalanced forces. I hope it's helped you with your understanding. I hope you found it useful to link it to terminal velocity. Keep watching my videos because you know that. Regular, Regular review! review. 
gets a better grade for you. Don't forget to like. So that I can keep making the videos. Comment. Especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe. So you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. <laughs>